Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor gives you sports betting tips. I'm your host, Professor Sides, and I have built a set of mathematical models named Sideline that predict various sports outcomes. You're more about the models in the course of this episode, set to cover six Major League Baseball games scheduled to be played on Friday, April 28th, 2023. Get you in here, check out the webpage on the banner. It's www.pickstheprofessor.com slash new for some explanations and community rules. Remember, if you're interested in projections and picks for every single game, sign up in Dub Club. That link is in the show description. That's also where you get access to our Discord chat. Got a lot of great NFL, uh, NHL and NBA playoff talk happening there. Golf talk, UFC talk, people helping people with sports bets. It's a lot of fun over there. You also get ad-free shows, early access to shows. Uh, you get the picks right away and i'll be trying to tweet out a little bit more going forward here just the value in that but continuously see it day in and day out a ton of times if you can get these picks pretty close to when i'm putting them out there get about the same number i'm able to get sometimes even better in some cases the value that that gets you from waiting those 24 hours or whatever until you get closer to the game can really add up over the course of the long run so a lot of great benefits are under a dollar a day so check us out on dub club again that links in the show description remember the sports are unpredictable so the discussion on the show projects a typical game it does not try to forecast it to a t as that would be a foolish and impossible goal we take a long-term view in here and don't get distracted all the weird things that happen in baseball it's a variable sport sometimes the a's win baseball games but in the long run that stuff balances out to lose a lot more than they win and it's like cousin jared and i talked about especially for the really good and really bad teams is the benefit to having a model to bounce things off of, whether it's mine, someone else's, your own projection, whatever it is, is that it helps us kind of figure out, does that minus 200 or plus 200 have value? And the simple answer is, is the probability that it happens higher or lower than the implied odds from the bet. And that's what we're talking about. One game, every once in a while a favorite wins, every once in a while a dog loses, but you got to understand where are the times that it makes sense to back a dog because we know dogs win, and when does it make sense to back favorites because we know that favorites win more often than not. It's all about the price and all about that probability. It's that long run that we talk about. Worked for us great last year. We're profitable so far solidly this year. Uh, And I expect more of the same because in the long run, this process works. But on an individual day basis, you just never know. There's lots of ups and downs. What I always say is that we're going to have good variants. We're going to have bad variants. And as much as I like to say, we'll be profitable every individual day. That's unfortunately impossible reality for any gambler, though I do like our chances of being profitable in the long run. And to me, that's really all that matters. Thinking about the way baseball works, I just felt like adding this in there. To me... Baseball is a little bit different than football in the idea that with football, a lot of times you watch the game and you kind of live and die by every game in baseball. You're putting out bets, hopefully on 8, 10, 12, 15 games. You know weird stuff's going to happen in a bunch of them, and you're just looking at the totality of them. When I'm watching these games, I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to enjoy, but I know weird stuff's going to happen every single game. It's not a sport to live and die by one bet because you will go crazy. You just look at the totality of the results, you know, over the whole day, over the whole week, over the whole month. You just, hey, the process is working, but you can't get too high or too low because baseball's a really weird sport as we see time and time again. Uh, Got a lot of great action for you here today for Friday. Got an early uh, start for one of the games in the late afternoon, so that's always exciting. But before we get to that, some reminders. Please hit that like button if you're on YouTube. So if you aren't yet, please consider subscribing or following. It's free. And if you turn on notifications, you won't miss any of the college basketball, MLB, or college football content that this channel provides. The way I scale out wages, A grade money line plays return four units. That is risk plus win equals four. That way, if it's even money, you risk two to win two. If it's a favorite, maybe you risk two and a half to win one and a half. If it's a dog, maybe you risk one and a half to win two and a half. Whatever the numbers have to be based off the odds, the A grades add up to four. The B grades add up to three. And the C grades add up to two. That way we risk proportionally more on favorites and dogs. And to me, it's an improved version from flat betting because with flat betting, my biggest issue with flat betting is, you know, I want to be able to play those minus 300s, but I don't necessarily want to lose 
three units on a, on a low confidence flat play. Uh, and with the dogs, you know, I want to be able to bet a plus 300, but I maybe don't want a full unit on it. I'd rather have like a half unit and this kind of just scales for us. So again, it's just the way that I like it. It keeps all options on the table, allows us to play big favorites, big dogs, medium favorites, medium dogs, everything, uh, and scale so that we have more on those more higher confident picks um, than the other ones. But with the picks, with the scaling, with everything, as always, take what you like, and leave the rest. That late afternoon game for 10 p.m. Eastern Royals at the Twins. It's like a big favor here in the Twins at minus 225. Do have some dogs coming for you later, but getting a little chalky here on this one. And again, just as like I mentioned at the top of the show, it has nothing to do with the fact that the Twins are favored. It has to do with what they're favored by and what the model says. In this case, the model projects this to be Twins minus 240. It says the Twins win almost 71% of the time. So if we're playing minus 225s, and they win 71% of the time. That's profitable long-term. The price on the Royals is just not good enough to back. I'm seeing plus 190. And again, based off the fact that the model says it should be 240, we're at least 50 cents off of getting value on the Royals. So Royals team isn't very good. If you've just been blindly fading them, you've been making a lot of money. Uh, and this Twins team is pretty good, especially the game at Minnesota. And you have a massive starting pitching discrepancy here with Jordan Lyles and Pablo Lopez. Lyles is a 488 ERA in his five starts. The underlying metric suggests it should be about a half run higher. He's actually slipping in the ratings, getting worse and worse. He's not had a good start to the season. And I don't know if that continues, but it's hard to argue he's anything better than slightly below average. And that's um, best case scenario versus a guy like Pablo Lopez, who is clearly well above average. The difference in rating between the two pitchers, according to sideline, one gets an 82, one gets a 113. 100 is average and the standard deviation is 15. So they're about two standard deviations apart from each other. Pablo's pitched uh, pretty in line underlying metrics wise with his three ERA. He projects to be a tiny bit worse than that, but still a very good starting pitcher. She have a massive edge to the twins there. They have a better bullpen. They have better offense. The games in Minnesota, this number should be higher. I expect it to get higher. You never quite know with some of these bigger favorites what the number's going to do, but minus 225 is decent value for the twins. Again, I'm not a money line parlay kind of guy, but if you are, don't put this in every money line parlay for the rest of the day. You don't want all your eggs in one basket. But if you do pick out one other big favorite that you happen to like, and we're not going to cover another big favorite on this show, but there is one over on Dub Club that I also do like that might be a decent one to pair with this one if that's your style. You can also look run line if you want. You can look first five. You can do team totals. You can play a lot of different ways. I just like to scale it out the way that I talked about at the start of the show. Twins are a solid play. I'm not going all in. 225 is a high price. It's part of the reason why it doesn't get an A grade because the value proposition just isn't there. But it is worth a solid investment in my mind at minus 225. It'll be chilly in Minnesota, mid 40s for the entirety of this game. And the wind will be blowing out at over 10 miles an hour for all of it. So the wind should kind of offset that chill a little bit and create more of a normal atmosphere. Model does say go under eight though. So it projects a total of 7.4 that the combination of the Twins relievers, uh, Pablo Lopez, that the temperature matters a little bit more than the cold, and that we should see a slightly lower scoring game than average. So if I'm still seeing eight under eight with that push prediction there, a decent bet. A lot of times I'm more concerned about the odd numbers because what happens if you tie on an even number less likely to happen here because the twins are more likely to win. You're less likely to have a tie game late and have that weird extra inning stuff. So under eight, pretty solid play in my mind, along with, again, even though it's a little bit of a price, you're backing the twins minus two twenty five, minus two thirty, minus two thirty five, all solid plays. Beyond two forty gets a little bit pricey, and if you see in something like minus two fifty, I would not be investing in there as the risk didn't change, but the reward not big enough to warrant an investment if the price gets that high. To the evening game, seven oh seven p.m. Mariners. The Blue Jays going to take the Mariners plus one ten B grade. Model says one thirteen, so the model says it's priced fairly well. But I'm giving this a B grade simply because of the fact that Alex Alec Manoa has been terrible this season. Five thirteen ERA with underlying metrics that say his ERA should actually be higher than that. And you compare that to Luis Castillo as a one fifty two ERA, and somehow the advanced metrics say it should only be a tiny bit higher, but still below two crazy in my mind how well he's pitched the underlying metrics saying it's not just a mirage Manoa has been terrible I mean this is just a massive mismatch here in starting pitchers otherwise I think this is pretty even the Mariners have the better bullpen despite 
uh, blowing it to the Phillies here on Wednesday, but they still have a pretty good bullpen. Uh, Blue Jays have the better offense. It kind of balances out. It's just that plus odds, getting Luis Castillo at plus odds against Alec Manoa just seems like a gift. I don't care how good the Blue Jays' offense is. And I know that the Mariners have been struggling so far, but Luis Castillo solves all of those problems. It's kind of like Otani with the Angels. The Angels have problems. You throw Otani and you say something better is about to happen. They may not win the game, but you know you're going to get something good happening there on, on the mound, and that's at least what you have with the Mariners here. And Manoa has been so bad, and it's not like it's been fluky. I, you know, this is a perfect time for this above average marriage offense to actually start playing like it, especially in a hitter friendly ballpark. Again, plus odds just seems like a gift here. So be great on the Mariners. Model says they only win at 47% of the time, but honestly, I think it's probably closer to 50. So I think we're looking at about a coin toss game at plus odds with the Mariners here. And this is really just again all about the starting pitching. And again, once you get past the starting pitching, the Mariners still have an edge of the bullpen. So it's not as if uh, once you get to the seventh inning, we expect problems. Uh, Castillo is also a guy who can easily give you seven or eight. He's sometimes gotten inefficient with his pitches and been pulled a little bit earlier this year going shorter distances, but he could absolutely give you seven or eight. Um, and again, I, I just cannot say enough things about how terrible Manoa's look. So really all about starting pitchers here. Uh, and again, that I'm projecting the roof to be closed. Model projects a total of 8.9. The actual total I'm seeing is eight and a half. If you're playing over one way to play, it might also be the Mariners team total over just because the way Manoa can give up runs. I wouldn't be playing the full game over just because while I know that Blue Jays offense is really good, I don't have a lot of faith in Castillo giving up much of anything. So if the, Blue Jays win, I have to assume it's because Manoa pitched well. That's kind of another way to look at this with correlated parlays. There's a lot of ways you can take that and interpret that, but I'd really be surprised if Castillo gives up a bunch of runs in this one, just how good he's been ever since coming to Seattle. Home, road, doesn't matter. Underline metrics support it. He's been a lot of fun to back, and I like doing it here again on Friday night. 7.10 p.m. Eastern Braves at the Mets. Let's get an A-grade play in here on the Braves at minus 130. Too long, don't read version of this one is, again, I always talk about it. The Mets just really, um, you know, left-handed heavy. That makes their offense pretty close to average against a lefty. Against righties, their offense is a whole lot better. But against lefties, uh, they're going to struggle a little bit more. And going up against Max Freed, you know, one of the better lefties in the game, you expect that's definitely be the case. The Mets will throw David Peterson, who has a 736 ERA. Now, the advanced metrics say it should be better than that, but only in the still five range, so it's still not good. You have a massive edge for the Braves there. Braves have better bullpen, better offense. They should be favorites, even though it's on the road. And I think they should be bigger favorites than this. The model agrees. Sideline says Braves minus 162, that they win it 62% of the time. And again, given the... Uh, talent behind Max Reed, who we all know is really good. The Mets downgrade against a lefty. Uh, and the fact that you have a pitcher-friendly ballpark, the model would indicate to go under 8 as the model projects 6.6. .6. Another way to play it, of course, is Mets team total under. Just remember that if you're playing game under and a sign that those aren't really that correlated for the most part. There are a couple cases where it is, but it's probably pretty rounding error. Um when you play team totals, your bets are much more correlated. So just understand that if you win one, you are more or less likely than to win or lose the other one. So don't go too heavy playing sides and team totals without understanding you are putting a lot of your eggs in the same basket. So if I were to play the Mets team total under, I might back, I might treat the Braves minus 130 as a B grade, then th drop a unit. Uh, on that team total under, or you just focus on the Braves, either one. You got a lot of good options here between the Braves and some form of an under, but you have a pretty pitcher friendly park there. You'll have 50 degree temperatures, winds blowing in to start off, shifting to a cross. So it's going to help the starting pitchers early on. And then by the end of the game, uh, it'll be pretty neutral. The only caveat here is we do have some rain towards the end of the game. So if you are playing the under, maybe you look first five because I'm not convinced this game gets nine innings in and or I don't really know what will happen towards the end of it. And so because of that, first five under might also be a solid way to go. You also could go like a Mets first five under. Not every book offers something like that. Depends on where you're playing. Uh, but the chance of rain towards the end of this one is going to make getting nine in not a lock, at least as of now. We're over 24 hours from when this goes off, so who knows exactly what the weather will look like, but there is some rain in the area 
um, especially towards the end of this one. So something to keep in mind for those total bets and run line bets that do require a full nine innings to be played. Otherwise, though, again, I love the Braves here. I love Freed, and I love fading the Mets against the lefty. Minus 130, too cheap of a price. I think it should be much higher than that. 7, 10 p.m. Eastern, Rays at the White Sox. Uh, look, the too long long version of this is uh, one of these teams is really good and the other one isn't. And it's really like, let's not overthink it. Uh, you'll hear Cousin Jared and I say these sort of things during college football season. Sometimes it's like, hey, this is just kind of too straightforward. Let's not try to make this more complicated than it is. Zach Eflin versus Luis Giolito. And I know that there might be a little bit of discrepancy on these names. People have heard about Giolito, his pro- prospect pedigree, his resurgence. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure he was one of the guys who threw a no-hitter or a perfect game or something a few years ago, though my brain confuses all that information. Uh, and, he, and he had a, a decent season or two, but at this point, he's just a league average pitcher. And obviously, I'd love to be a league a- just a league average major league pitcher. But I have Zach Eflin as actually a pretty solid pitcher. I really like what the Rays have done with him. The underlying metrics are even more promising than his 281 ERA. I think he's a really good find. If he's still out there on the waiver wire in your fantasy league, go grab him. Um, I just think he's the much better pitcher in this one. Giolito's got a 450 ERA in the advanced metrics, so that's pretty spot on. I just don't think that this is priced correctly with regards to the starting pitchers. I think it's priced as if Giolito's either the better pitcher um, or they're the same, and I don't think that's the case. I think Eflin's a better pitcher. We all know the Rays' relievers are better. We know their offense is better. This White Sox team is struggling. The Rays, you know, potentially the best team in baseball. I don't know. This one just seems like it should be priced higher. We have to be careful about how big we play favorites up to at the start of the show. Cause Jared and I talked about it yesterday, but minus minus one forty is a really good price. Gets a B grade sideline says it should be raised uh, right around that mark in the minus minus one thirty seven upper minus minus one thirties. But I, I you know that's the, what the model says. Me personally, I'd make this more like raise minus minus one fifty, minus one sixty, something like that, because I think they should be just bigger favorites in this. I wouldn't play the raise like minus two hundred, right? That's that's this White Sox team still does have some talent, but the way these two teams are playing with Eflin against Giolito, I, I know the game's on the road, but I think the Rays here are a really good investment at a price like this. B grade from me on a night that should be nice to start, but getting colder as it goes along around 60 degrees at first pitch around 50 closing winds blowing in. And that's part of the reason why the model would indicate to go under eight and a half as the model projects 7.9. As I have adjusted the model, the books have adjusted the model. Unders have become a lot more um, hit a lot with a lot more frequent frequency here as of late. And I'm not a huge Giolito fan, but he still is average um, with the wind blowing in and a chillier night in Chicago. And with Eflin on the mound of that White Sox offense, I think the White Sox have a hard time scoring. So I do like under eight and a half. No rain in the forecast for this one. So under whether it's a full game or first five or a team total, all those. Pretty good investments, and again, I like the Rays here just because I think it's priced as if Giolito might be the better pitcher or they're the same, and I just don't think that's true. 8, 10 p.m. Eastern, Angels at the Brewers. I think the Brewers at minus 125. This is a C grade according to the model, but it's like a C plus grade. It's definitely one that I want in my portfolio, and there's one variable that I haven't really coded into the model yet. Maybe it'll come. It will come eventually. I just I couldn't tell you when. Um, and that's travel spots. Um, and this is one to just kind of using my eyeballs on. Anaheim playing a game at home here on Thursday afternoon, late Thursday afternoon, then going uh, to Milwaukee. Not a great travel spot for them. And so I think that kind of matters, um, a, you know, adds a little bit of value to this one. Model says it should be Brewers minus 121. But again, if I give a slight adjustment for that travel spot, then minus 125 is a pretty reasonable investment here on the Brewers. It's a little bit too steep of a price. Uh, to like it a ton, but minus 125, still not a bad investment. Wade Miley and Tyler Anderson, a pair of lefties. The only caveat, of course, is Angels offense is really good. It's not just the fact that they've scored a, you know, a bunch of runs on the A's who are you know terrible pitching. Their offense is pretty good. Um, but you know these two starting pitchers, according to the model, are the same, but I think Wade Miley's the better pitcher. And it's not just because they're ERAs. Miley's ERA is south of two, and Anderson's is over seven. I don't think that's really accurate, but Anderson's underlying metrics have his ERA pretty close to that, which is concerning. The advanced metric for Miley say his should be around four. That's about where I expect him to end the season, somewhere in that ballpark. So Miley's not bad. I don't think Anderson's quite this bad, but he has been really shaky to start the season. Um, so I like fading them here again on the travel spot on the road. 
especially given how bad their bullpen is. If Anderson doesn't have a good start, you got a lot of bad relievers the Angels have to throw. That's obviously a strength for the Brewers. Again, the only caveat is Angels offense is really good. So I just don't want to pay too big of a price against them. But I think minus 125 should be part of your portfolio. And it's that concern about the fact that Anderson's not good, the Angels bullpen is not that good, but the Angels offense is that has us back on the over here, especially at nine. I'm really liking the over nine on this one, having that push protection, knowing that you've got to push at minimum if it gets to four to four. Model projects 9.7, and I absolutely be all over this over. I do think it's not a situation. Sometimes I'll say that, you know, when it's kind of like, I don't really love the side. So I think take the over, maybe pass on the side. Here's the side play if you like it, but the over's better. I think both Brewers and over should be part of your portfolio. I think the Brewers, as long as you're looking at this, now if you're seeing only Brewers minus 140, just stick to the over nine. But I think over nine, and again, Brewers in these mid minus 120s are both decent investments. And then to the worst travel spot of the day, thankfully they have a few more hours on it, but the Dodgers traveling across the country back from Pittsburgh is why I'm on the dog here on the Cardinals at plus 134 model. So it should be Dodgers minus 123. Dustin May and Jack Flaherty. These guys have similar ERAs, but May is the better pitcher. So I don't want people to get distracted by that. I'm not sold whatsoever on Flaherty and this 329 ERAs. The advanced metrics say it should be over five. May is the better pitcher for sure. Full stop. There's no doubting that. However, offensively right now with the way they're looking, I think these teams are pretty close offensively. I like the Cardinals bullpen a little bit better. And again, given this travel spot, Cardinals on the, on the, you know, as a dog here, be pretty live. You could also look at run line if you want to play a little more conservative. The downside with run line is just, there's not a ton of games that end up falling in that lose by one category. And we talked about with the Dodgers, the flip side of the Dodgers always winning by more than more than one is they don't win by, <laughs> by exactly one that often. Right. So run line, isn't something I'm interested in, in the Cardinals, but I know some people like that. So if, if you do want to play it more conservative, you can play it that way. I'm just going to say if the dot, if the, if the Dodgers continue this skid and if the Cardinals can pull one out, Cardinals coming from San Francisco just up the road is much easier than the travel from Pittsburgh three time zones away. I love the plus odds here. And again, it's not so much that I think that Flaherty is a great pitcher. I just think once you get past that, it's advantage Cardinals or neutral across the board. And so really just have to kind of hold your breath, hope that the Cardinals can put up a few off of May and or hope that Flaherty can, you know, pitch decent enough. If the Cardinals are down by one after five, they got a really good shot at this one, given their bullpen and given that they do have a good offense. So plus odds worth a stab here on the Cardinals plus plus one thirty four gets a B grade for me. Totals eight and a half model projects 8.9 pretty standard night in LA around 60 degrees to start mid fifties to close when blowing out dying down as the night goes along. So just exactly what we always talk about in LA model likes the over above average offenses for sure. I'm not sure I'd be playing the over. I think eight and a half is probably pretty solid. If I could get a nine, I probably would be under. If I could go eight, I would go over eight and a half. So really stay away from me. Uh, but again, I think the Cardinals as a dog, not a bad look here at the odds that we are getting. Otherwise, that's all I've got for you here today. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Picture the Professor. Don't forget to subscribe so you can show up the sports betting content provided on this channel. It's dropped right into your feed. Back again tomorrow with more baseball betting content. And until then, as always, best of luck. And remember, you can eat your betting money, but please don't bet your eating money.